To talk to us about the cues that we're getting uh, from around the globe, we're joined by Adam Myers, Senior Market Strategist at Credit Agricole. He's joining us on the phone line from London. Adam, thanks so much for being with us at NETV Profit. Now, the ECB has come out with its stress test results. And on the face of it, just 13 banks need to raise you know, more capital to be able to weather another financial storm out of the 150. It appears to be good news. But, you know, uh, the ECB is saying that they have about more than a trillion dollars um, of bad loans on the books of the banks. You know, uh, at today's exchange rate, this, is, this amounts to about 9% of uh, the Eurozone's GDP. Isn't that a scary number? I think it is. I think that irrespective of the weekend's results in terms of the bank stress tests, those large uh, non-performing loans that you suggest will continue to weigh upon Eurozone growth. And of course, they will scare some investors into investing in the Eurozone. So I think while the news on the surface may be taken as slightly more positive. The underlying cause of the problem remains and investor optimism will remain low. What happens? Uh, because uh, we're not seeing uh, in a pickup in growth, plus there's a fear of deflation. In this scenario, what happens to bank debt and uh, to the bad loans? And this entire exercise of stress test, how conclusive will it prove in the end? Well, they have, of course, been some critics that say that the stress tests have not been rigorous enough and have not been as far reaching in terms of the quality of assets being reviewed. But that being said, even if the test had been more rigorous, it would only accelerate the consolidation of European banks that we expect to continue over the next few years. And with that consolidation, we should finally see a, uh, a consolidation in the Eurozone and, a, and an improvement, but that is still many years away given the current trajectory of non-performing loans. Right. Adam, do you think uh, this thing is going to have any kind of an impact on the policy stance of Mario Draghi, uh, uh, which is expected uh, next week now? Well, I think he will remain as cautious as he did at, as at the September meeting. I think the ECB is already doing an incredible amount of uh, policy accommodation and investors who expect the, the ECB to go further may well be disappointed. Most of the policy now needs to come from the government or fiscal side and of course many foreign investors are now looking towards the respective European governments not the ECB, to perform the task of supporting the Eurozone economy. All right, so uh, it's the government which everybody is now keeping an eye out for. But also, uh, in the next one week now, we are getting a lot of economic data coming in from the US and from the Eurozone as well. Uh, how do you expect markets to trade? Today they are mixed, but uh, you know, in the next two, three trading sessions, how do you expect them to trade now? Well, I think with the Federal Reserve ending its quantitative easing program and the U.S. economic outlook remaining relatively firm, U.S. markets should trade quite well. Similarly, in Europe, with the stress tests that we've just commented on out of the way and many earnings coming, particularly from the financial sector this week, we should see risk sentiment improve and markets trade higher on the week, particularly if we get a slightly better Eurozone inflation figure Friday. All right, so, um, and what's your uh, view on the currency in the near term? Well, on the Euro, we expect a consolidation this week, and then we expect it to trade higher versus the dollar, probably back up towards 128 by the end of this week. All right, Adam. Thank you so much for joining us here on NDTV Profit and sharing with us your views as far as uh, the markets are concerned. Lots of interesting economic data is also lined up now. We'll be keeping an eye out for that as well.